Hi, this is Dean Wedekin with Maxi Lift and with Pro Tips. Today in Pro Tips, we're going to talk about the boot section of a bucket elevator. Now, when you think about a bucket elevator, most of the time what people see when they drive by on the road or down the highway or even be uh, just out in some country road is they're going to see the tall part that sticks out. Maybe the trunking, maybe the head section. A lot of people never even see the boot section of a bucket elevator and even fewer go into the boot pit of a bucket elevator. But it's really important. The importance of the boot section is to get product into the bucket elevator. And so if there's something wrong with the boot, the whole bucket elevator isn't going to work properly. So today that's what we're going to focus on. Now with a boot section, if the whole idea is to get product in, you would think, well, how do we get it in? Most boot sections have the opportunity for a inlet on this side, which would be the upside, because the buckets are going to go up, or an inlet can be on the downside, where the buckets are coming down. It can be on either side. A third location for an inlet could be a shovel pocket on the side. The reason you might need a shovel pocket is because sometimes bucket elevators get plugged. And if they get plugged, you gotta release the, the product out, whatever that is, grain, feed, whatever the case is, and it's gonna get all over inside of the, the boot pit, and you have to clean it up. The easiest way to clean it up is to have a shovel pocket. You just open that up on the side. Of course, you use your shovel and you scoop it in. So that's a third type of inlet. Sometimes people don't think about that, but it'd be a great idea to include that on the next bucket elevator that you purchase. So when we're looking at an inlet on the upside, when we look at these buckets here in this display bucket elevator, they're coming horizontal very low because this has a very small boot pulley. But until those buckets get to be in the horizontal position, they're trying to throw product out down here, just like they're trying to throw product out up at the top in the head section. And so the inlet on the upside needs to be no lower than the uh, lowest part of the how far down the pulley can go. Because if they're down too low, then the product is going to be trying to be thrown back out rather than staying in the buckets. Now, on the downside, it's not as important. You can put that inlet further down because they're not going to fill the buckets anyway. As the product comes in the inlet, they're hitting the back side of the bucket. The buckets are churning around inside there. The product is churning around. The buckets aren't going to fill until they get back up into this area here. And so the entire boot section is going to fill up with product before it fills and continues on up. So the position on the downside oftentimes is lower just because you don't need to have it up very high, but it's not as critical. Now, one thing you think about, well, what difference does it make of where I have that inlet practically? Well, the main thing is on the upside, if you have the inlet too low and the buckets are still trying to throw product out all the time, your bucket elevator is probably not going to ever achieve its rated capacity because it's trying to fight itself too much. So that's an important part there. The other thing has to do with how fragile your product is. If you have a product that uh, can be easily damaged, you want to feed it on the upside, you want to narrow your inlet, and you want the product to go directly right into the buckets. If the product is fragile and you feed it on the downside, say for instance like pellets that just came out of a cooler from the pellet mill. They come in, they're churned around in the bottom, they hit the bucket numerous times and the bucket finally fills and goes up. And so those pristine pellets that you just made with your pellet mill and ran through the cooler, now you're creating fines, which you don't want with pellets. So depending on the product, you might want to feed for sure on the upside. Things like mash feed, sometimes whole grains are okay on the backside, but it's important to keep that in mind. Now, if we look at the other components of the boot section, let's look at the pulley, the shaft, the bearings, and so forth. The boot pulley generally is the same diameter as the head pulley. Sometimes it's smaller diameter because on the very large bucket elevators that might have a head pulley of seven or eight foot diameter, when you think about if you put that down into the boot section in the boot pit, that makes a very large boot pit and it has to be very deep to make sure that you can get the inlet in the right position. So the idea that was come up with years and years ago was let's use a smaller pulley for the boot pulley and let's have a knee pulley. Actually, it's going to be on the downside, but you have a knee pulley. So as the belt comes down, it can come at an angle to the smaller boot pulley and takes up less space and your inlet can be lower, especially on the upside. 
The boot pulley is just going to be on a shaft and bearings. The shaft doesn't have to be as big as the shaft that you would see on the head section because it's not a drive shaft. It has to be strong enough to be able to handle the tension of that belt being pulled because as you tighten the belt with your tension mechanism, it's going to put a lot of strain on that shaft, but not as much as the drive shaft up the top that's going to be doing all of the work from the motor and the reducer. The bearings, this particular bucket elevator has a two bolt flange bearing. The bearings on the boot can be a number of different designs, could be a four bolt flange, a pillow block, or the standard old style take up bearing. Now, many bucket elevators now do use a more standard bearing like a two bolt, four bolt flange or pillow block because they're easily readily available and oftentimes you're using them on other pieces of equipment in your facility. So you don't have to have a special bearing. The take up mechanisms have been adapted over the years so that you can use these standard bearings. This one, like I said, has a two bolt flange bearing and the take up mechanism is right here with a threaded rod. That threaded rod, of course, is gonna allow you to put pressure down when you wanna get your belt tight so you can put pressure down on both sides. Another type of take up is a gravity take up. Not used very often, but instead of having this type of threaded rod, what you would have is actually in between a, uh, um, spacer, a space in between here with a container of weights based on the product, the height of your bucket elevator, the tension of, that can be put on your belt and so forth. And you put different amounts of weight in there and it automatically just holds that belt down and continually puts pressure on it at a, at a steady rate rather than with this where you have to mechanically lower it down whenever you want. Now a boot section ideally is going to have access holes to inspect. And if it's an inspection door, then when you open it up, there's gonna be a steel mesh over it so that you can't get your hand in there. That's a true inspection door. But other little panels could be on a new bucket elevator that can be removed so that you can put on a uh, belt alignment sensor. You wanna be able to tell if that belt is moving back and forth or if the pulley is moving back and forth. So you wanna be able to put those on. The shaft of the boot shaft there is gonna be tapped so that you can attach on a motion monitor sensor to see whether or not that shaft is spinning. You might think, well, the motor and the drive are up the top. Why do I wanna know if this shaft is spinning? Well, that's because if there's any problem with your bucket elevator not being able to move or not uh, going at the right speed, this right here is the place you wanna find out the quickest because if you've got product coming in and this pulley isn't moving, that means the buckets are not going up either. And that could mean a plugged leg very quickly. We'll talk later about some of those sensors, belt alignment sensors, motion monitors, and things like that. But for right now, the importance of the boot section cannot be overestimated. It has to be designed properly, or you're not gonna get the capacity you want and not going to uh, work as efficiently as it should. So if you have questions about your boot section, maybe about boot pulleys, knee pulleys, anything to do with the boot section, get in touch with us at MaxiLift. We wanna help you out. This is Dean with MaxiLift and Pro Tips. Thanks for watching.